Chelsea nil, Southampton won, and what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say today? That I sat through 110 minutes of football being uninspired, bored, unentertained, and more importantly, disheartened. The fact that I didn't want to get behind this camera today because I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't have much to talk to you guys about. But I'm here to rant. I'm here to relieve some of my thoughts. And I'm here to tell you, there is nothing good gonna come from this project as long as Graham Potter remains in charge. You're not gonna hear Potter out, you're just gonna hear pure logic about what happened in today's game. And I'm gonna break it down to the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. So if you actually want to be entertained and listen to actual football logic, stay here. If you want to hear me shout and scream, I'm not gonna do that because I'm disheartened. I'm unrevealed with this stupid project and I'm done. Welcome to the Gaff Guys, you guys. I am deflated and it's a pathetic performance. So I will really appreciate if you guys do the due diligence and just hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Cause I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm a lot more witty and like quick on my feet in normal circumstances, but two wins in bloody 15 games will leave you like this. It's to the point I started cleaning. I don't clean, all right? I am too lazy to want to clean. It's, I started cleaning during the game. I don't like doing chores. And in this case, I literally started dusting the house before I do the, the actual clean. Pathetic. Let's get into the ugly, because there's a lot of ugly things to talk about. Then there's a lot of bad. And there's one or two good things. And then we can actually just wrap up the video, because it's not going to be a long The ugly. Truth. Potter's had more than enough time to actually give us some element of performance, to give us some element of structure, to give us some element of wisdom that we could grow on and try to develop a style of play. Two wins in 15 is unacceptable at a relegation battle inside, let alone a side that spent 600 million pounds. And more importantly is Chelsea FC. I am a spoiled football fan. I have been spoiled my whole life. I am used to us being top half, top five minimum. I am used to trophies, I am used to decent football, I am used to entertainment. What I saw today was borderline criminal because it was abuse. Watching that is abusive to my mental health. I'm not even joking. I am literally sitting here unhappy. Like I am not enjoying my football whatsoever. I'm not enjoying the sport whatsoever. I'm not enjoying these performances, not whatsoever. And yet it's two wins in 15 with no hope. Then let's get into the tactical setup. What have we seen? This is another, like the first 45 minutes, Southampton bopped us off the ground. They beat us in, in every challenge in midfield. They beat us in every tactical battle. They beat us in every logistical way that we could impose ourselves onto that game. Enzo looked like a passenger because we didn't get him a right partner. Kovacic looked like he was walking around. They always looked isolated from the defense or the attack. There was no one holding up the ball to allow us to sustain some pressure. Yet, tactically, I didn't understand what we were doing. You literally took away the individual quality from the team in Reese James and Thiago Silva, and the barometer dropped down to the floor. The performance level just dropped. So for anyone that was saying we were getting better and we are improving, nonsense. It evidently is the players that are carrying us because tactically, I saw no shit. Now I'm gonna get into players because we spoke about Potter and now we need to talk about players. I've got a few players listed here that started the game. Mason Mount. You're shoehorning him into the team at this point. There is no space for Mason Mount in this. Yet he starts, he had 10 touches, not 10 passes, 10 touches in the game. In the first half, he had 10 touches. That makes me sick that a left winger for Chelsea against the 20th best team in the league, the last place team in the league, Southampton, our winger had 10. Mount got booed off when he came off, deservedly. I don't care what anyone says. The fans were more occupied with holding banners up saying the boy that had a dream instead of holding the club accountable. You did your job today when you booed him off. Applause for you. Number two, I am tired of us giving opportunities to kids that aren't ready. I want to see our better players playing. The project lives and dies by players such as Kai Haver, Raheem Sterling, Joao Felix, Mason Mount, Mudrick, Players that are ready now, allegedly. Let's see if they're good. If they're not, get them out. It's not complicated. I don't want to see Mariweke every week play. He's not ready. It's not fair on him. He's 20 years old. He's not ready. He runs around with his head down, 
taking on players like he's playing at year 11 versus year 8. He thinks he can dribble past everyone and do something. And every single time he gets it, he either beats his man and then passes it sideways or Worse, he gets dispossessed in the middle of the ground and all of a sudden there's an attack directly at our defense. This has happened on multiple occasions. This is something I spoke about two, three weeks ago when he played the first two games. He is very good at dribbling with the ball, but he overdoes it. It becomes predictable with no end product. Mudrik on the other side, sadly, I think it's the exact same with him. He's not ready. Fafana, y'all were calling for Fafana. Every single one of you was calling for Fafana. Fafana's better than Kai Havertz. Fafana's gonna come in and Fafana's gonna run in behind. Fafana's gonna do this. What happened? He got hooked at half time. Why did he get hooked at half time? Because he just weren't good. He is not ready for this level. You cannot be a player that played at the Norwegian league and all of a sudden transition into Premier League football just like that. There is no way our scouting was that good. He's not ready. The reason these signings work at Brighton is because they are at Brighton. Brighton can accept performances like this. Chelsea can't. Brighton can loan out Matoma, can loan out Saicedo, can loan out other players and then bring them back in when they're ready because the expectation is a lot low. And at Chelsea, the expectation is too high. And I feel sorry for Fofana, I feel sorry for Madueke, I feel sorry for Mudrik. And the problem is they all got bought with expectations that they're going to play. So guess what we're going to have to happen now? We're going to see them play. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Don't worry, this is just the ugly. We're getting into the, the bad. bad. The first half was the worst football I think I have seen in 10 years. From Chelsea Football Club, that was the worst piece of football I think I have seen. Lackluster, toothless, courageless, cowardice. Absolutely, I can keep going. I'm like a thesaurus over here. I've got words for days. And this is absolutely disgusting. We didn't create a single opportunity. No clear cut chance. If you count corners as opportunities, God bless you because you don't understand what football is. Because our corners hit the first man and they go straight to a Southampton player or they go straight into the keeper's hands. One of the two. We do not produce anything from set pieces or open play. In that first half, nothing happened. Then we need to talk about Kaladu Kulabali. Kaladu Kulabali, you're an experienced individual. You're a player that I always say we need to give time and we need to ensure that you are enabled to integrate into the team. The problem is, big man, what are you doing? Five minutes in, he should have got a red card. I don't care what anyone says. I expected him to get a red card. That red card challenge was disgusting. Once again, experienced players, the ones that are meant to lead Barry Shield, the ones that are meant to be the example for an Enzo Fernandez behind him, the way Thiago Silva didn't step up. Khaled Kulabali got hooked at half time. Guess what? He deserved it. Aspi Laqueta, let's talk about the goal. Aspi, I love you. I really do. Legend of the club. I will hold back my reservations on how I speak about you. But I need to be honest. What are you doing? And this is consistent from Aspi. Aspi's legs are gone. Aspi can't keep up with the intensity and pace of the Premier League anymore. So what happens when that happens? You end up over committing, you become rash, you become overzealous into jumping into tackles. And Aspilicueta jumps into a tackle, Ward Prowse edge of the area, lights up his eye. Beautiful free kick, goal, top bins. That's not a surprise because he does it on a regular basis. And when you do it on a regular basis, it's called expectation. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. And in this case, you best start preparing to fail because Aspilicueta gave him another treat. And for me, it's unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable what happened there. That goal was the nail in the coffin of Graham Potter's Chelsea tenure. He should be getting sacked tomorrow morning because this is unacceptable. I don't care who they get in charge, put an assistant in charge. Put whoever you want in charge. This man is not fit enough to wear the, uh, the manager's jacket. That little suit he wears with a Chelsea crest, I don't want to see him in it. This is down to him. We have mismanaged our squad. You have a squad full of unbelievable talent. No way should this squad have lost this game. I'm going to give you some two positives today and then we're going to call it an end. because There are two positives today. In the second half, when Kai Havertz came on and when Sterling came on, I saw chances, I saw link up, I saw indiv individualism, I saw the thing I said at the start of the game. When Rhys James and Thiago Silva play at the back, there's a benchmark level because of quality of players. It doesn't matter who the gaffer is, they'll always have a benchmark level. Kai Havertz replaced Fafana, Sterling replaced Madueke, and guess what happened? 
Oops, the level of, oh, sorry, Sterling didn't replace Madueke. He replaced Fofana, and then Havertz came on for Madueke. And all of a sudden, whoops, the layer came up. The ba b boundary came up. We, the level of play increased. And once again, why did it increase? It increased because there was link up, there was hold up, there were chances. Sterling should have scored the first one. Sterling should have scored the second one. Chelsea should be talking about a win today if Sterling could finish. The problem is I'd rather take him missing chances because I know in the long run he will get me 15 goals. He will get me link up play and he will give me points. Those misses were off the line and they were unlucky. Kai Havertz set him up twice. Kai Havertz had a few good runs himself, linked up play. Joao Felix woke up when Kai Havertz was on the pitch. This is why Kai plays. Not because you agenda merchants want to push your narrative. Kai Havertz was not perfect, but he gave you the fundamentals and he gave you the basics. And for that, Kai and Sterling go into the good. And finally, Badi Ashil. Playing next to Kolobali must be difficult because Badi Ashil, who looked absolutely imperious prior to this game, made a couple mistakes, but he grew up from it. He had a good second half, he was good on the ball, he was trying to start attacks, it's not his fault. Fana came on, 45 minutes, done a good game. Wesley, absolutely perfect. High line, imposing on the striker, defended well when he needed to, passed the ball well. The problem is, is we're just not very good. So what do you expect? When you're not very good, you're not going to get great results. And we're not good because we have no gap. I don't know what the solution is. People are calling for Jose. People are calling for Tuchel comeback. People are calling for Zidane. People are calling for Flick. Problem is, I don't know the solution, but I just know one, one way we can actively do something to improve. Get rid of Potter. Has to happen. Guys, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I am actually distraught.